Thank you. <laughs> uh, presiding at this devotional, we have Elder Kevin W. Pearson, General Authority 70 and President of the Utah Area. We also have his wife, Sister June Pearson. We would also like to thank Utah Area 70s and their wives for being here. We would also like to recognize Shane Reese, Academic Vice President and President-Elect of Brigham Young University. We also have Scott Esplin, Dean of Religious Education at BYU joining us, as well as J.B. Hawes, Department Chair of Church History and Doctrine. And then we also have Brian Patterson, Associate Director of Utah Valley Institute of Religion. My name is Sammy Lewis, and I am a student at UVU. And I am so grateful for tonight's topic of missionary work. I have recently been called to serve in the Brazil Sao Paulo Interlagos mission, and I could not be more excited for this message. We are going to go ahead and get started by singing hymn 264, Hark All Ye Nations. Um, that will be led by Spencer Baldwin, accompanied by David Keim. They are both students in the BYU School of Music. After our opening hymn, we will have an invocation by Heidi Johnson and she has been recently called to serve in the Samoa Apia mission. Father, we are so grateful that we have the ability to gather today and hear from Elder and Sister Pearson. We're grateful for the technology that allows those who can't be here with us in person to gather and listen online. We're grateful for all the missionaries serving right now for their time and efforts. And we ask a blessing on them, Father, to Help them find those who are ready and prepared to hear thy message. We also ask a blessing on all those who are preparing to serve a mission and recently returned missionaries. Father, we ask a blessing on Elder and Sister Pearson as well and on their family. Please help thy spirit to be with us today as we listen to them and learn from them. Please help our hearts to be open to hear what the spirit would have us learn tonight, and we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you, Heidi. That was beautiful. 
Continuing with the rest of our program, we will be having a special musical number, Joseph Smith's First Prayer. This will be sung by Matthew Paez and accompanied by David Kime once more. Uh, Matthew is also a student in the BYU uh, music education program. Um, after this musical number, we will be pleased to hear um, from Sister June Pearson and Elder, Elder Kevin W. Pearson. And we have just a short bio about them. Um, Elder Kevin W. Pearson is a General Authority 70 of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He is currently serving as president of the Utah area. As a young man, he served a full-time mission in the Finland Helsinki Mission. Later, he and his wife, June, served as mission leaders of the Washington Tacoma Mission. Both Elder and Sister Pearson love missionary service. Together, they are the parents of six children and have 18 grandchildren and two on the way. After their remarks, we will sing hymn number 27, Praise to the Man, after which we will have a benediction by Braden Thurngood, who has been called to serve in the Italy-Rome mission. This is my 
Thank you, Matthew. Matthew. That was beautiful. Isn't it wonderful how music can bring the spirit into a meeting? My young friends, it is good to be with you tonight. We are grateful to you, to those of you who are gathered here. Oh, thank you. You can tell I haven't done this before, but we are grateful to be gathered here in the Joseph Smith Building and to each of you gathered in meeting houses throughout Utah. We pray that the Holy Ghost will be with each of us here tonight. We love to meet with missionaries wherever we go. We feel the same way about prospective missionaries because we love missionaries, work, and missionaries. Your decision to serve a mission will be one of the best decisions you will ever make. It will literally change your life forever. If you thank you, if you let it. President Gordon B. Hinckley said that every good thing he has done in his life came as a result of him having served a mission. That can be true for you as well. There are two crucial attributes that every missionary needs to be successful. The first, is the gift of charity, the pure love of Christ, love for the Savior, love for the people, love for your companion, and love for the work. The prophet Mormon encouraged us to pray unto the Father with all the energy of heart that we may be filled with this love that he hath bestowed upon all those who are true followers of his Son, Jesus Christ. Our sole motive must always be love. The other crucial attribute that every successful missionary must have is the companionship of the Holy Ghost. Sister Julie Beck said, the ability to qualify for, receive, and act on personal revelation is the single most important skill you can acquire in this life. That is certainly true of missionary work. In the Doctrine and Covenants, the Lord asks this important question, Unto what were ye ordained? He again then gives the answer to preach my gospel by the Spirit. My brothers and sisters, you can begin to develop this powerful spiritual gift in your life right now. When we were called in for an exploratory interview with President Oaks, not knowing if we would be called on a mission or not. That night, I started to pray for that which I most desired, which was the gift of discernment and a greater abundance of the Holy Ghost to be with me, so that I could be a helpmate to my husband 
as well as to help the missionaries we would have stewardship over. I prayed every prayer for seven months before we left, as well as in every prayer while on our mission for these gifts. The spirit of discernment and having the gift of the Holy Ghost was a great blessing in my life. You too can start right now, this very night before your call, to be blessed with these two powerful spiritual gifts. Start praying tonight. It will be a huge blessing in your life if you do so. The Lord can make so much more of your life than you can on your own. As missionaries, we teach and testify that Joseph Smith was the true prophet of God and that he restored the true church upon the face of the earth. How well do you know the prophet Joseph Smith? It has been said that we love them the most who we know the best. Reading the Joseph Smith history is a way to come to know Joseph Smith a little bit better. Elder Renlund talked about the framework of Revelation in his October 2022 General Conference message. He said, quote, when Latter-day Saints operate within the framework of personal revelation, the Holy Ghost can unleash astonishing insight, direction, and comfort, end of quote. Do you believe that the Holy Ghost can do the same for you? It would be wise to review his talk. The prophet Joseph Smith recorded his personal history in the Pearl of Great Price. His experience can teach us much about the principles and process of receiving answers to our prayers. So what can we learn from Joseph's experience? First, we need to ask and take inspired questions to the Lord. In verse 10, Joseph Smith asked, what is to be done? Asking inspired questions in prayer leads us to receive revelation. Young men, don't ask whether you should serve a mission. That question has already been answered by President Nelson. He said that serving a mission is a priesthood responsibility. It is a commandment. A better question would be, what can I do to better prepare myself to serve a mission? Or how can I develop the courage to serve? Sisters, President Nelson said that a mission for you is a powerful but optional opportunity. He went on to say, Pray to know if the Lord would have you serve a mission, and the Holy Ghost will respond to your heart and mind. Sisters, please note, President Nelson said to pray to know if the Lord would have you serve. Second, we need to be reading the scriptures every day. Joseph Smith was reading in the epistle of James. Scripture reading and reading preach my gospel and studying preach my gospel needs to be done every day, every day, every day. It is vital in receiving inspiration. Chapter 32, verse 3 tells us that the words of Christ will tell us all things that we should do. As you commit to consistently read the Book of Mormon, you, have, you will have the influence of the Holy Ghost in your life. The Book of Mormon is the keystone of our religion, an essential part of conversion is receiving a witness from the Holy Ghost that the Book of Mormon is true. President Hinckley taught, quote, those who read the Book of Mormon, we will be blessed with an added measure of the Spirit of the Lord, a greater resolve to obey his commandments, and a stronger testimony of the living reality of the Son of God. End of quote. As a missionary, brothers, you will have at least 700 hours of personal study. Sisters, you will have at least 525 hours. Each of you could become gospel scholars. Resolve now to be diligent in your personal study of the scriptures. Joseph Smith received revelation because he was studying the scriptures. Studying the scriptures is crucial to receiving revelation. Fourth, we need to take time to reflect and ponder, to think. We have to study it out in our mind. As Joseph read from James chapter 1, verse 5, he said, Never 
did any passage of scripture come with more power to the heart of man at this time than it did to mine. It seemed to enter with great force into every feeling of my heart. I reflected on it again and again. My dear friends, as you study the Book of Mormon, slow down, read carefully, and think deeply about the, what the Lord is trying to teach you. Reflect and ponder. Think about what you're reading and ask yourself this question. What principles and patterns does the Lord want me to understand? Is that fifth? We must be doers. President Oaks has said that revelation comes to us when we are on the move. We have to be doing. We can't sit around waiting, wishing, and hoping for revelation to come. But we need to be willing to act on the impressions we receive. Six, we sometimes need to pray out loud. The aha moment that Joseph Smith received was to pray out loud. In verse 14, he said, I, never had I had never as yet made the attempt to pray vocally. And finally, we need to, we are actually, excuse me, we are more, more focused on what we are going to say when we pray out loud. Sometimes we too, in our personal prayers, need to pray out loud. President Nelson has emphasized the importance of using sacred pronouns when we pray to, res to show respect for our Heavenly Father. So we use thee, thine, and thou. My dear friends, I urge you to have meaningful personal prayers. Heavenly Father wants to share so much with us, but we have to take the time to pray. And finally, we need to prepare ourselves. Joseph Smith didn't just go out and kneel and pray. He went out beforehand, as we read in verse 14, to find that perfect spot, Joseph prepared himself. The scriptures tell us, when ye are prepared, ye need not fear. President Monson once said that when the time to perform is here, the time to prepare has passed. The time you spend now preparing yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually to serve will be invaluable to you. Don't delay your preparation. As a missionary, your daily preparation will also be crucial to your success. This is why personal and companionship study is so important. Elder Holland has said, you will make or break your mission by the things that you do or don't do between the hours of 6.30 and 10 every day. So what do you need to do to begin, do, what do you need to do, what do you need to begin doing right now to prepare? May I make two additional suggestions? First, take charge of your testimony of Jesus Christ, as President Nelson has urged us to do. Work for it, own it, care for it, nurture it so that it will grow. Then watch for miracles to happen in your life. Second, let virtue garnish thy thoughts unseasonally. Then shall thy confidence wax strong in the presence of God and the doctrine of the priesthood shall distill upon thy soul as the dews from heaven. The Holy Ghost shall be thy constant companion. Brothers and sisters, we want each of you to be a powerful and successful missionary. More importantly, we want you to become deeply converted, lifelong disciples of Jesus Christ. You were born at this precise time for this very purpose. I'd like to invite you to reread the Joseph Smith history. In closing, I would like to quote Elder Neil A. Maxwell. The Lord doesn't ask about our ability or inability, only about our availability. And when we prove our dependability, the Lord will take care of our capability. Start right now in trusting in the Lord. Let God prevail in your life. Show the Lord that you are willing and that he can depend on you. Demonstrate to God that he, has, he never has to worry about you. Remember, all things are possible to those who believe. Believe that the Lord will help you, guide you, and lead you by the hand to become great missionaries. 
the Lord has given us this assurance when he said, quote, Be of good cheer and do not fear, for I, the Lord, am with you and will stand by you. It is my hope and prayer that all of you will decide to serve a mission. As I said before, it will be one of the best decisions you will ever make. President Hinckley has said that he has seen many miracles in his life. There is no miracle like the miracle of conversion. If you serve with all your heart, might, mind, and strength, you will experience that conversion, that miracle of conversion in your own life. I would like to bear my testimony. I am grateful for the prophet Joseph Smith. I have a book here that was published in 1904 by um, Andrew Jensen in Denmark. It's a Danish life history of the prophet Joseph Smith. Andrew Jensen was an assistant church historian in the late, night, well, the late 1800s and the early 1900s. My father in Bergen, Norway, went to check out a book in the library there and couldn't find the book that he needed, but found this book on the life of the prophet Joseph Smith by Andrew Jensen and checked it out of the library and proceeded to read it all night long and became converted to the gospel and joined the church in March of 1940. I know that Heavenly Father knows each and every single one of us, that he knows us by name, that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, and that he is our savior and our redeemer. I know that jo Joseph Smith was a prophet of God. I know that the Book of Mormon is true. And I know that we are led by a living prophet today, President Russell M. Nelson. It's my hope and prayer that we will hearken to his words. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. This, this has to be just in the right spot. My dear young brothers and sisters, Sister Pearson and I are so grateful that you would join us here this evening for this special devotional. Thank you for coming. We express our love for you and pray for the influence of the Holy Ghost as we discuss your preparation to serve the Lord as a full-time missionary. Speaking to each one of you, President Nelson has said, quote, you are among the best the Lord has ever sent to this world. You have the capacity to be smarter and wiser and have more impact on the world than any previous generation, close quote. Have you given serious thought to what that means for you? What is your capacity? President Nelson further added, Quote, you have been sent to earth at this precise time, the most crucial time in the history of this world, to help gather Israel. There is nothing happening on this earth right now that is more important than that. There is nothing of greater consequence, absolutely nothing. The gathering, or this gathering, should mean everything to you, he said. This is the mission for which you were sent to earth, close quote. That is a very bold statement, but I testify to you that it is true, and I add my testimony that serving a mission is one of the most important decisions that you will ever make in your life. It will be crucial to your ability to realize your potential and capacity to be smarter and wiser and to make a more significant difference in your life. Now, it takes faith to serve a mission, but you will discover that it takes even more faith to succeed as a missionary. Faith is a gift from God, bestowed as a reward for personal righteousness, Elder McConkie said. It is always given when righteousness is present, and the greater the measure of obedience to God's laws, the greater will be the endowment of faith. Can you see how you have great control over how much faith you qualify for. I hope you will choose to qualify for a great endowment of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ.
You are demonstrating your willingness to serve, but your success will be determined by your willingness to serve with all of your heart, might, mind, and strength. If you put limits on your willingness, it will limit your faith and spiritual power. Your willingness is so crucial. What are you willing to do? We have come to earth to reconfirm our determination to become a lifelong disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ and to place him and our sacred covenants at the center of our lives. That is the single most important decision you will ever make in your life. Now, the way you serve your mission will determine what you do for the rest of your life. To fully prepare to serve, each of you will be endowed in the temple and armed with spiritual power. You will be set apart by your stake president and given priesthood authority to preach the gospel by the power of the Holy Ghost. The Book of Mormon, combined with the Spirit, will be your most powerful resources in conversion, your own and those you will have the privilege of teaching. The central purpose of the Book of Mormon is to convince all people that Jesus is the Christ. If the Book of Mormon is true, then Jesus is the Christ. And Joseph Smith was his prophet. And the Church of Jesus Christ is true and is being led today by living by prophets receiving living revelation. Therefore, the single most important thing you can do to prepare to serve is to receive by the power of the Holy Ghost your own testimony that the Book of Mormon is true. I encourage you to read it every single day. If you wait until you get to the mission, it will be a tragic error. Start now. Read every single day. Now tonight, I would like to make a case for the divine calling of the prophet, prophet Joseph Smith. It has been said that we love them the most whom we know the best. You heard Sister Pearson say that. She asked, how well do you know Joseph? I suspect that each of you believes that Joseph Smith is a prophet of God and that through him... The Father and the Son initiated the restoration of the gospel of Jesus Christ, sung so beautifully. Tonight, I pray that the Holy Ghost will deepen your own understanding of Joseph Smith and that you will come to know him and love him even more so that you will have a greater desire and capacity to bear powerful spiritual witness of him. Speaking of Joseph Smith, the Lord declared, quote, this generation shall have my word through you, close quote. President Russell M. Nelson once emphasized, quote, the 1838 account of the visitation of the father and of the son is recorded in the Pearl of Great Price. It was approved by the church as scripture. That means that it is the will of the Lord, the mind of the Lord, and the word of the Lord to the saints. No one he continued, can be a member of the church in full faith who does not accept this testimony of Joseph Smith as a truth. The reality of that appearance is just as central to our theology as our declaration and belief in the atonement and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, close quote. Elder Bruce R. McConkie declared, the great question which all men and women in our day must answer, and that at the peril of their own salvation is, was Joseph Smith called of God? Now, let there be no misunderstanding, he continued. We are witnesses of Christ. He is our Savior and Redeemer. And there is no other name given under heaven whereby men and women may be saved. This is his church. It bears his name. But continuing, he stated, we are also witnesses of Joseph Smith, by whom we know of Christ, and who, who is his legal administrator, to whom all
Therefore, it is crucial that each of us has a personal testimony of the divine calling and miraculous work of the prophet Joseph Smith. May I suggest several reasons why. First, Joseph was chosen and prepared before the foundation of the world to lead the last dispensation of time, to restore the fullness of the gospel of Jesus, the blessing of the new and everlasting covenant available to all on both sides of the veil. Number two, Joseph is the supreme witness of God, the eternal father, and the Lord Jesus Christ in this dispensation. Both have appeared to him and spoken with him. Three, no human being in ancient or modern times has brought forward more scripture concerning the message and reality of Jesus Christ than Joseph. Four, a personal testimony helps inoculate us from the relentless and intensifying attacks on Joseph Smith and his character and is crucial in helping us become lifelong disciples of Jesus Christ. Now, as an 18-year-old freshman attending the University of Utah, I believed that Joseph Smith was a prophet. However, I didn't really know much about Joseph Smith at that time. I had a very wise mother, however, who invited me to an attend an adult education class on ancient and modern prophets taught at our ward. My mother realized that in a short period of time, I would likely be serving a mission and would be teaching about Joseph Smith, the first vision, and the Book of Mormon. Maybe that applies to a few of you as well. So she encouraged me to attend the class with her. Like many 18-year-olds, I resisted and suggested I was too busy attending my own classes. I will never forget my dear mother getting right in my face and asking, do you love me? <laughs> yes, I responded, you know that I love you. Then attend the class with me tonight, she said. The topic is the divine role of the prophet Joseph Smith. Well, I couldn't say no after that, so I went. We sat together on the back row by the exit door so I could leave if I became bored. I, never, I will never forget that evening. The instructor was well prepared and provided an interesting and engaging outline of Joseph Smith's life and family. I was learning things I had never heard before about his life and about his mission. Suddenly, I found myself completely immersed in the discussion. When the instructor ended his discourse by reciting Joseph's account of the first vision, I experienced a powerful personal witness by the power of the Holy Ghost that the Father and the Son did in fact appear to Joseph. I knew for myself in that very moment, in a powerful and undeniable way that I had never before experienced. I knew it was true. I knew it. And I realized in that moment that I had always known it was true. That experience proved to be crucial in the early days of my mission in Helsinki, Finland. The Finnish language was extremely challenging for me to learn. For weeks, the only substantive contribution I could make to the lessons was reciting the memorized outline of Joseph's first vision and adding my personal testimony that it was true. Because my language was so limited, I'm not sure if anyone fully understood what I was trying to say. But every time I rehearsed that experience and then bore a heartfelt testimony, the Holy Ghost reconfirmed to me in my heart, that it was true. That witness saved me during those early days in Finland, and it has stayed with me all these years ever since. Do you know for yourself that Joseph Smith was called of God? You're entitled to that witness, 
And I invite you tonight to let the Holy Ghost bear witness to you that Joseph Smith is a prophet of God, divinely called and ordained to restore the fullness of the gospel in this last dispensation of time. Your personal testimony is crucial to your success as a missionary and your ultimate destiny. Dear brothers and sisters, we will be sending you to places you have never been before, to meet and to learn to love people you have never met before, and to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ as his personal representative, which you have never done before. We are asking more of you than you have ever been asked to give, to sacrifice and to work harder than you have ever worked before. You are going to meet individuals who will challenge your message and seek to undermine your testimonies with attacks on the Savior and his restored gospel and on the prophet Joseph Smith and his character. It has always been so, and it will always be. It is what the Savior himself and his early apostles faced every day of their ministry and were ultimately killed for. It is what Joseph Smith faced almost every day of his life and the reason why he and Hiram were ultimately murdered. That is why it is crucial that you have a personal witness of the Lord Jesus Christ and of the divine calling and miraculous work of the prophet Joseph Smith. If you do not yet possess this witness, I invite you to begin and pray with all the energy of heart until you receive it. And you will receive it. If you and I are going to represent and defend the Lord Jesus Christ in his restored gospel and the prophetic role of Joseph Smith, then we need to anticipate that we will also experience some opposition as missionaries and disciples of Jesus Christ. If we are going to place the Savior at the center of our lives and keep our sacred covenants, we need to expect some opposition. To remain faithful, however, we need to know the Savior, and we need to know the prophet Joseph Smith. It's not enough to know about them. We need to know them. Again, we love them the most, who we know the best. We want you to personally know and love the Savior, and to personally know and love the prophet Joseph Smith. Brother, as Sister Pearson mentioned, in two years, you're going to have at least 700 hours of dedicated personal study time. That's a lot of study time. Sisters, you'll have about 525 of dedicated personal study. Do you think you could come to know the Savior and his life, mission, teachings, and atonement in that amount of time? Could you come to know Joseph Smith and his divine role in the restoration in that time? Well, you can if you commit yourself to use your time wisely and to learn how to learn by the power of the Holy Ghost. You will be set apart to have special access to the teaching, directing, comforting, and, and converting power of the Holy Ghost. Are you willing to use it wisely? Now, at the time of Moroni's first visit, Joseph Smith is 17 years old. He has no formal education, and he lives in a small, obscure town in upstate New York. But he learns that he will be known for good and evil among all nations, kindreds, tongues, and peoples. Just think of that. His entire life, he will face rejection, ridicule, and relentless attacks on his character that ultimately will result in his cold-blooded murder by a mob of angry men along with his brother Hiram. This is no ordinary young man. And Emma, his wife, is no ordinary woman. So who is Joseph Smith and why is he so crucial? Well, let's start by understanding who he isn't. Joseph is not some random 14-year-old boy who just happens to be the first one to pray out loud about which church to join. No. The story of Joseph begins much, much earlier. Joseph was chosen long before he was born. In the pre-mortal existence, before the very foundation of the world, Joseph distinguished himself as one of the most intelligent and trusted sons of God, the Eternal Father. He grew in spiritual stature to a level few would ever equal. Among all the great and noble spirits, Joseph was chosen and ordained to be the prophet of the last and greatest dispensation of all time. Joseph is and has always been 
<clears throat> has always been extra extraordinary and almost without equal before the very beginning of time. God shows him. God prepared him from the very beginning. He is not a random, uneducated boy. He was born in 1805 in Sharon, Vermont, because that is precisely when and where God planned to initiate the restoration of the fullness of times. God chose him from the very beginning. This was according to a divine plan, established by God himself and his beloved son, Jesus Christ. Notwithstanding Joseph's glorious foreordination, he still needed much preparation and divine tutoring. Joseph was visited by Moroni over 20 times. He was visited by every ancient prophet from the Old Testament and the New Testament, and by every prophet in the Book of Mormon. He was visited by the Father and the Son on four other occasions, and by the Savior on another four occasions. He was tutored and ministered uh, repeatedly by over 60 recorded divine messengers who helped him to develop a level of spiritual and intellectual understanding and capacity beyond any previous prophet. Joseph is also a very young man, but just think about what Heavenly Father and the Savior accomplished through him. At age 14, the Father and the Son appear and speak to him. At age 17, Moroni first visits and begins to tutor Joseph. At age 21, Joseph finally obtains the plates. At age 23, John the Baptist, Peter, James, and John restore the priesthood keys. At age 23, the Book of Mormon is translated, completed, and published. At age 24, the church is organized, and he receives the Doctrine and Covenants Section 20 on church government. At age 25, he has received over half of the sections of the Doctrine and Covenants, including Section 84, the Revelation on the Priesthood. And he's led the saints to Kirtland, Ohio. At age 26, he organizes the First Presidency and dedicates the Kirtland Temple and receives the 76th section of the Doctrine and Covenants, the vision on the, on the degrees of glory. At age 26, he receives Doctrine and Covenants section 88 and initiates the School of the Prophets. At age 29, he receives the Doctrine and Covenants section 109, the revelation on the priesthood. At age 34, he establishes the city of Nauvoo. At age 38, He's the mayor of the second largest city in Illinois. He's the commander of a militia of 2,500 men that is one-third the size of the entire United States Army. He's a candidate for the presidency of the United States, running on a platform to abolish slavery, to annex Texas, California, and Oregon, create a national bank, and many other important issues when he's assassinated in cold blood by an angry mob. This is no ordinary man. To add to that, he is also the most prolific translator in history. The total pages translated by Joseph Smith constitute twice the volume of the entire New Testament, more than any prophet who has ever lived. He translated the entire Book of Mormon from an unknown language into the English language by the gift and power of God in approximately 60 working days. This means that he translated at the astonishing rate of six to eight pages of manuscript per day. Remember, he's 23. He did this without the advantage of modern technology in a single draft with remarkably few instances of strikeouts or edits. The Book of Mormon is tangible and irrefutable evidence of Joseph Smith's foreordained designation as the prophet of this dispensation. It is another testament that Jesus is the Christ. It teaches more about the Savior and his infinite atonement than any other book. It is the instrument that heaven has placed in our hands to help us in our privilege of participating in the promised gathering of Israel. Don't take it for granted. For nearly 200 years, individuals have tried to refute and undermine the Book of Mormon, its origin and the existence of the plates, the role of Moroni, the role of Joseph Smith in the translation process, and the authenticity of the content, doctrine and principles found in the Book of Mormon. But there is no other legitimate explanation for the Book of Mormon than the one given by the prophet Joseph Smith and by the Lord himself who declared, quote, 
And he has translated the book, even that part which I have commanded him. And as your Lord and your God liveth, it is true. Close quote. The Book of Mormon is truly a miraculous miracle, as President Nelson has stated. Now, in addition, Joseph Smith received all but three of the 138 sections of the Doctrine and Covenants by revelation. The Doctrine and Covenants contains nearly 1,100 statements about the future. The Doctrine and Covenants contains powerful doctrines, principles, inspired counsel, and direction, establishes the administrative and governing structure of the church, explains the keys, authority, and power of the priesthood, and provides essential ordinances and covenants. The Pearl of Great Price, including the books of Moses and Abraham, contain critical truths taught in no other place by two prophets from two other great dispensations. Just think what we know because of these inspired scriptures and the clarifications to the Bible given through the prophet Joseph Smith. What would you not know and understand if it were not for the prophetic role of Joseph Smith as a prophet, seer, and revelator? Well, just think for a moment. What did the Lord, what did the Lord reveal through Joseph Smith? Here's just a partial list of things we know because of Joseph. First, the true nature of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Second, the relative functions of those three members of the Godhead and their relationship to mortal beings. Third, man's entire nature, the pre-mortal existence, the purpose of mortality, and the post-mortal ex existence, and the eternal destiny of God's children. The role of the atonement of Jesus Christ in assuring immortality and the possibility of eternal life. The, the essential role of the priesthood, priesthood power, keys, and essential covenants and ordinances. The essential role of temples, eternal marriage, and proxy ordinances. The knowledge that all God's children who have ever lived can attain the highest heaven hereafter. The relationship of the threefold sources of truth about men and the universe, science, scriptures, and continuing revelation. The correct structure and organization of the Lord's restored church. The role of agency, Adam's fall, and human suffering, and the identity and work of Satan and the, and the doctrine of Christ. The list could go on and on. But what if Joseph Smith is a man? What do we know about him as a person? Joseph himself stated, quote, I never told you I was perfect, but there is no error in the revelations which I have taught, close quote. The story of Joseph's life is the story of a miracle. He was born in poverty to loving parents, to loving and devoted parents. He was reared in adversity. He was a kind, loving, and devoted husband and father. He and Emma were driven from place to place. He was falsely accused and Ill illegally imprisoned. They experienced hardship and were asked to make extraordinary sacrifice. He experienced severe opposition and persecution throughout his life, but he never wavered from his divine calling. It seems as though the adversary was aware at a very early period of my life, he said, that I was destined to be a disturber and an annoyer of his kingdom. Why else should the power of darkness combine against me? Close quote. Nevertheless, Joseph had a native cheery temperament. He was a happy guy. He was a large man, strong and physically active. He delighted in competitive sports, including pulling sticks, which was a test of physical strength at that time. Joseph did not shrink from physical confrontation, and he had the courage of a lion. The love of the saints, the love of the, the saints had for him was inexpressible. A man of the frontier, young, emotional, dynamic, and so loved and approachable by his people that they often called him Brother Joseph. Men who, know, who knew Joseph best loved and sustained him as a prophet. Joseph had very little formal education, but he was extremely intelligent. Quote, I am learned, and I know more than all the world put together. The Holy Ghost does, anyhow, and he is within me and comprehends more than all of the world, and I will associate myself with him, he said, close quote. Joseph taught that men and women should seek learning by study and also by faith. The best way to obtain truth and wisdom is not to ask it from books, he said, but to go to God in prayer 
and obtain divine teaching, close quote. He could read a passage of scripture three times, and one year after reading it, he could quote it verbatim and open the book to the portion quoted. He learned by repetition. William Clayton said of Joseph, the more I am with him, the more I love him. The more I know him, the more confidence I have in him. John Taylor added, I testify before God, angels, and men that he was a good, honorable, virtuous man, that his private and public character was unimpeachable, and that he lived and died as a man of God. Brigham Young added, I do not think that a man lives on the earth who knew Joseph Smith better than I did. And I am bold to say that Jesus Christ, exceptional, no better man ever lived nor does live upon the earth. Now, that's not the Joseph Smith you read about on TikTok. It is, however, the truth about him spoken by those who knew him best. So what can we do to come to know and love the prophet Joseph Smith? And how can we become personal witnesses of his divine calling and mission? May I suggest, make a few suggestions? First, prayerfully read and study the Book of Mormon. The Book of Mormon is powerful and tangible evidence of the divinity of Christ. It also is proof of the restoration of the gospel through the prophet Joseph Smith. An essential part of conversion is receiving a witness from the Holy Ghost that the Book of Mormon is true. So if the Book of Mormon can be discredited, then Joseph Smith goes with it. The one is a witness of the other. But if the Book of Mormon is true, then one must also accept the claims of the restoration all that it, and all that it accomplishes, including the prophetic role of Joseph Smith. Next, prayerfully study and ponder the Joseph Smith history as Sister Pearson has invited you to do. The more you know about Joseph, the more you will love and revere him as I do. Next, prayerfully study the Doctrine and Covenants. These are direct revelations to individuals and to the church through Joseph. Revelations are answers to questions. As you read the answers, seek to understand what questions Joseph was asking and why. Bear your testimony of the prophet Joseph Smith and his divine calling often with power and conviction. As you do, the Holy Ghost will testify to and through you with power that it is true. Now, if you remember nothing else from this evening, I help, hope you will come to know and feel the truthfulness of the following statement found in the Doctrine and Covenants, section 135, verse 3. Quote, Joseph Smith, the prophet and seer of the Lord, has done more save Jesus only for the salvation of men in this world than any other man that has ever lived in it. In the short space of 20 years, he has brought forth the Book of Mormon, which he translated by the gift and power of God, and has been the means of publishing it on two continents, has sent the fullness of the everlasting gospel, which it contained, to the four quarters of the earth, has brought forth the revelations and commandments, which composed this Book of Doctrine and Covenants, and many other wise documents and instructions for the benefit of the children of men, gathered many thousands of Latter-day Saints, founded a great city, and left a fame and name that cannot be slain. He lived great, and he died great in the eyes of God and his people. And like most of the Lord's anointed in ancient times, he sealed his mission and his works with his own blood. And so has his brother Hiram. In life they were not divided, and in death they were not separated. So my dear brothers and sisters, to that, I add my own personal witness, independent of any other human being. I know by the power of the Holy Ghost that Joseph Smith is a prophet of God. Everything I have told you this evening about him is true. One cannot criticize or attack Joseph without attacking God the Father and his son Jesus Christ, whose prophet he is and has been from the very foundation of the world and will always be forever and ever. 
I pray that you will come to know him and to love him as I do. And that you will become a lifelong disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ and a witness and a defender of the divine calling and role of the prophet Joseph Smith. God lives. Jesus is the Christ. Joseph is their prophet. The Book of Mormon is true, and along with the Doctrine and Covenants, contains the fullness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are led by a living prophet, President Russell M. Nelson. If you hold fast to eternal truth and follow the living prophets, you will always be blessed. You have been called of God to assist in the greatest work and the greatest cause on earth. I pray that your mission will be as powerful and transformational in your life as my mission has been in mine. God bless you to be faithful and to find great joy and success in this extraordinary work. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen.
our dear Heavenly Father, we are thankful that we will all be able to meet here today, and we are filled with gratitude to be able to meet here on this extraordinary campus. Father, please bless all those preparing to serve and those who are currently serving to be able to spread the joy, the love, and knowledge of the gospel to everyone they come in contact with. And Father, please bless us prospective missionaries as we prepare to serve, that we will be able to come to a knowledge that the Book of Mormon is true and that we will be able to preach of its truth to those around us. Father, we thank thee for the speakers today and the wonderful music we have been able to hear and listen to. And we say these things in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.